pull us titles. It's new comic book day all over again, and it's time to talk about what's coming out and what we recommend. Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I am your host Laura and this is the best co-host, my husband Scott. So we are here of course to talk about our pull list titles and new comic book day, but before we get started, wanted to give you a quick reminder about our 500 subscriber giveaway. That is our Ken Lashley variant remarked signed by the artist, but I will tell you all, I have amazing things planned for October. I have some mystery giveaways planned. For those of you that don't know, one of Laura and I's absolute favorite um, holidays is Halloween yes. here in the U.S. For our friends watching around uh, in other areas, comment down below. Let us know if there is such a thing, if you celebrate it end of October. Um, Sam Hain uh, in the U.K., more of a Celtic tradition, but yes. I know we have people watching all over now. So let us know in the comments if you don't mind uh, if there's a holiday you have at the end of fall that's not celebrating bounty as much as it is spirits you know day of the I mean, dead in mexico we get all that um but you know enlighten us but it's one of our absolute favorite holidays we love decorating the house we yes. go all out we don't have children of our own but we kind of get into it with the excuse of well maybe we'll have trick-or-treaters <laughs> which we have had some and we do have costumes for the dogs we do just and saying. they may or may not make appearances in fact let's just say it, they're going to make appearances. they're going to make appearances yes COVID turned everything upside down last year. The, f well, the year before that, I was out of town. So this year, we're going to be together, hopefully with trick-or-treaters in our home for Halloween. And we're going to share some stuff with you on videos coming up that uh, kind of explains why we like the holiday so much. Yes. And we have, like I said, some great giveaways. I also have yes. a special event planned for yes. Friday, October 29th. Just mark your calendars yes. for that evening. Stay tuned. Because there are more details coming. Mm -hmm. And like I said, more giveaways, more subscriber fun bits. And I'm going to start just doing some mystery giveaways to mm -hmm. people who are commenting on these videos. Cool. So I won't tell you when I'm going to do the giveaway. All I'm going to do is pick a random video and go through the comments and we're going to pick someone to send a mystery giveaway too. Hmm. Dun dun dun. So, on to the good stuff. So technically with new series, I mean, we don't really have any, you know, issue number ones, the, at least for me, that I'm grabbing. No. For you, you have their issue number ones, but they're not really new series. What do you have? So basically, Suicide Squad annual number one is, I guess, one of the new ones on my list. In this one, we're going to get the backstory of uh, teen Connor Kent. Okay, so the origin story. It's kind of new, I guess, but it's not at the same time. But the other one that I have is Extreme Carnage. Now, it's Toxin, number one, but it's part five, I believe, of eight yeah. from the Extreme Carnage series. Toxin's coming back. He's being introduced in this storyline, if you've been reading along. Um, <laughs> it's not... The symbiotes that have come along have not done well. Just to say that. But I'm anxious to see what they do with the tox uh, Toxin character. Also anxious to see what continues to go on with the Anti-Venom and the new character, Silence, which I really am a fan of. It's not golden. Has nothing to do with the babbling brook that I'm married to. I have no idea what you're talking nope. about. Nope. So, ongoing series. First one for me, of course, is Nice House on the Lake, issue mm. number four. James Tyne in the fourth, it is a phenomenal series. So I'm just going to say right now, if you have not started grabbing this series, finding issue number one right now is really difficult. There are some reprints that have come out since. You can also get it digitally. Yeah. But this series has been one of my absolute favorites for this year. I highly, highly recommend it. Is this one though that you would recommend digital? Because isn't part of the lore of this story like the panels and the colors and it's i mean it's just it's this it's everything yeah i mean so. there are some books that i absolutely don't have a problem with reading digitally but then there are some that i really feel like the visceral like being able to feel and tell the difference in the the paper and the colors and just even like the text balloons are different i think yeah. in print versus digital and i thought this is one that maybe you really to fully experience it you need to be holding the book in your hand I, I prefer the book on this one, yeah. but I will say for those of you that already know you're going to buy the trade when it comes out, 
Yeah, I that's completely true. understand grabbing the digital and just yes. knowing, you know, it's coming. Yep. Um, so what they are doing with this series is each issue is now focusing in on a different member of the household. So this one is focusing mm. in on the comedian. Mm. And we may, we're apparently going to get a new revelation, which each issue has been doing, but we're going to get a brand new revelation and we're going to see if he can throw some comedic atmosphere into this current situation that I can't tell you what's going on, but I will tell you it's amazing. Okay, so continuing in a uh, series for me that's pretty much ongoing, Amazing Spider-Man 73 comes out, enough said. <laughs> really? We, we don't get to know what's in Fans know. Enough said. Okay. Uh, I'll explain it to her later. <laughs> I am behind on Spider-Man. So the next one for me, with that ominous twist, is going to be The Me You Love in the Dark, issue number two. Now, honestly, The Me You Love in the Dark and Nice House in the Lake are probably like the best examples of foil, you know, storylines. Nice House on the Lake, issue number one, just dropped this humongous kind of, like, the floor came out from under us. You just had no idea what to expect. And suddenly every single issue is creating more to the storyline and more questions, a couple more answers. So everything is building very, very quickly. The Me You Love in the Dark, on the other hand, I describe it more as like a jazz song. It's meant to slowly build and take its time. It's got a lot of art. Um, there is certainly some dialogue in there, but it's, it's starting to kind of build and create this sort of sense of eeriness as opposed to just jumping into the action. So both are very unique, but the Me You Love in the Dark issue number two should be giving us a little bit more of that, you know, building storyline. But I would not expect this to be a very quick, fast paced read in comparison to The Nice House on the Lake. So you're saying it's like an ogre, lots of layers. Yes but prettier because it's an artist and she's fantastic as a character who loves her wine. How can you I not just, love a Every character? time you say the title, I think of like a late 80s, early 90s country song. I'm like, don't turn on the light. Love me in the dark, you know, because yeah, I'm just saying. No, no not <laughs> at all. All right. So for me, continuing on, I have Batman issue 112. This is kind of like the official start of the Fear State which if anybody else out there has been anticipating it, um, yeah, join the bandwagon. So it's been building for quite a while, all the way back to, I think, Infinite Frontier, like issue zero. Yeah. But regardless, it's Scarecrow, it's Batman, it's a couple of new protagonists and Peacekeeper. You've got also in this issue a backstory with like Clown Killer um, that's been going on. So multiple mm -hmm. characters it's have been reaching awesome. out to him saying, hey, we're going to help. Hey, if you need my help. Hey, Bob, you know, don't do this on your own. He so far has been like, I got this. Well, he meets Scarecrow in this issue. We're going to find out just how much he probably doesn't have this. But anyhow. Which, let me know down in the comments, how many other people are fans of Scarecrow? He was always yeah. one of my absolute favorite villains that I think is always underutilized. So I'll be honest, animated versions of him have left me wanting well, Gotham loved, loved him in Gotham. The character, the actor. But yeah, no, you're right. It was. It, it was, was Dark both. Knight. Yeah. So that actor in particular, he's yeah. he's on my radar now because of his portrayal of Scarecrow in, Go in Dark Knight. Sorry. Now I'm, I'm interested in reading about him more because before the only references I had were common, uh, animated versions and I was always like, eh, whatever. No, I'm, I loved the Scarecrow since I was yeah. a kid, which may also explain some of my love of Halloween, or one mm. may have started before the other. So, continuing on. Batman Catwoman, issue number seven. So, Ooh, I have been giving you all... The yes. The disclaimers on this series. Now, if you do not know the original Tom King Batman run, mm. don't read this yet. There's the Phantasm animated movie that will also kind of help you get some backstory. Mask of the Phantasm. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of kind so of... So you need to do like research before research. you read this. So you cannot reading. jump into this series. Um, I'm still trying to kind of get together some sort of list of make sure you cover these bit um, because mm. it goes back to the wedding. It has stuff oh, okay. that happens yeah. after the wedding. And then it has kind of the present time. All right. So there's a lot of really cool things in the writing, though. And each one is the 12 Days of Christmas. 
So there's a nice little tie into that as well, but there's just so much that you need to know before you read the series. So still working on that kind of list and a review for you all, but just letting you all, if you're a new Batman fan and you have not read a lot, skip this series for now. So kind of in that same vein, if you are a, looking at the new Defender series, and I find this to be true a lot with Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange is one of the earliest books I ever read that I got a trash bag full of comics for my oldest brother. But you really kind of had to know kind of a little bit of background about the characters to get what was going on or why somebody was portrayed the way they were or for it to make sense, you know, what was happening now. Doctor Strange, in my opinion, is one of the, there's like a lot there. There is, there's a lot of canon, but there's also a lot of, it's not even like origin story. There's just a lot of stuff that they pull into his storylines and typically compared to some other characters where you might be like, oh, it's the same two, you know, antagonists, but there's something a little bit different about it this time. You know, with Doctor Strange, it can be like completely new, out of the blue, left field, and then they piece it together and make it make sense to you as to why that's important. Defenders... I started reading number, I finished number one. Number two is coming out. It's sort of on my maybe list only because there is so much going on. And in issue one, I've already read it twice. And I'm like, wait, what? Because number one, we're dealing with the multiverse. Number two, we're going back in time. And we're going back in time to a different multiverse where we're not just meeting Galactus, who you might think you know, but we're meeting like the mother of Galactus. It's Galactus, but not as we know him. Yeah. I went cross-eyed and then I read it again and I'm like, all right, I think I'm on board, but it's on my maybe pile for that reason. So all of that to say, if you're a big, huge Doc Strange or Defenders fan, and even on the Defenders side, like this is not the usual Defenders. This isn't the, if you're new to the game, it's not the Defenders you saw on Netflix. It's not Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica. It's not. It's Doc Strange. And then like Red She-Hulk as a Red Harpy. Um, and knowing that backstory helps. You know how in comics when they say, see, blah, 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 like a character will make a comic. Hey, I know you helped me out against so-and-so. And then it'll have a little asterisk. And down here, there'll be a little box. And it'll say, see Defenders issue 100. See Avengers issue blah. This issue was so full of those little asterisks that that's what I'm saying. If you don't have those back issues, you're going to be like, okay. And just follow along or you're going to be like me and question everything <laughs> but it's red hulk master raider um the nebulous cloud long long detail i still don't really understand the origin of that one um and there's one other one uh silver surfer duh obviously the former herald of galactus if you know the backstories cool if you don't and you jump in with that first issue of defenders good luck yeah. you may enjoy it just for what it is or you may be like i have no idea what's going on and not care and not read an issue number two so my maybe leaning towards no i'm i'm leaning towards getting this as a trade instead is the joker presents a puzzle box issue number two now issue number one i, I was so excited because this was going to be so cool it was there's something that has happened mm. um, a puzzle box has to be solved and the only person who can give you insight is the joker except having a collaboration with the joker we all know is a double-edged sword so i'm like this could be amazing so it's supposed to be the psychological thriller kind of side of the joker mm. but instead it's a lot of that tongue-in-cheek where Visually, you can you can do it. Where, for instance, when the Joker's like, oh, we had a very civilized conversation. And then you see in the images, you know, they're having this mass brawl. Yeah. Like, that, you know, is easy to do. But instead, they have the Joker kind of making these big, like, oh, and then we did this. And, and he's trying to make everything seem so dignified. And you know he's lying. But then sometimes the artwork is depicting what he's saying so then i can't tell if we're supposed to go along with the lie and we're also then supposed to be piecing together how much of it is true and are we supposed to be kind of seeing it from james gordon's perspective of okay here's the whole like fantasy story and we know it it's riddled with falsehoods but then are we trying to piece it together with james gordon to then say 
oh, well, that's full of it, but that's probably true, and then kind of get to the point. There was a kind of turning point that James Gordon makes at the end of the issue, and there weren't enough clues for me to kind of be the the hyper detective and, and come to the same conclusion. So that part of it, I didn't like. I'm hoping maybe they're going to fix it in issue number two. So there's still potential for this series, but I... I did not like the beginning of it. I think it's it had too much potential to then kind of take a weird angle. It You guys may read issue number two, and if you guys say it is fantastic, I will be right back on board. But for right now, I'm a little hesitant. I have no hesitations at all with my next one, Daredevil 34, featuring one of my all-time <laughs> favorite Daredevil villains, Bullseye. City's on lockdown, Bullseye. I mean, if if the only reference point you have for Daredevil and Bullseye is the original movie back, uh, it's been, been ben a while Affleck. now with Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner, and Colin Farrell. Yeah. There's a lot more there, but even that, like I'm, I, I still like that movie. People have complained, people have written it, I flamed it, yeah. whatever. I liked it. I like Colin Farrell's Bullseye. I loved his Irish little lilty voice while he d delivers some of the most insane <laughs> um, lines. Um, but he does it with that way that you're just like, wait, that's not supposed to be funny, but I laughed. This continuing on in the comic book canon though, it really gives you a lot to put your teeth into. So if you like that version at all, I highly recommend this. If you didn't like that and you're like, oh, it left me kind of like, he didn't really do anything for me, I didn't understand, then mm -hmm. I definitely recommend this because this will give you enough information to go on that you'll probably get pulled into the storyline from this if you weren't before by the movie version. But I can't wait for that one to come out. So my next one is Suicide Squad Get Joker issue number two. Now, Scott was the one who actually grabbed issue number one and I was on board only because of the cover, I thought it was a cool cover. Now, yeah. I haven't read issue number one, but I did read the free comic book day issue of King Shark, and then there's a preview of Get Joker at the back of it. Huh? King Shark I thought was good, but then I started reading the Suicide Squad Get Joker. And the reason that I'm pulled into this one is the person who's now going to join the Suicide Squad to finally put an end to the Joker is Red Hood. So <laughs> you now get this amazing team up where basically Amanda Waller is like, Listen, you've already been killing these villains. We are the team that will get the job done. Do you want to put an end to the man who killed you? Yeah, Jason Todd is in Belle Reve, and yeah. that's that's a pretty cool place to start. <laughs> so for me, I'm be quickly becoming a big fan of Jason Todd because of what they're doing well, with this character with Clown Hunter, yes. the new series. That was an awesome twist to throw him and Clown, Hun Clown Hunter on the same team. I can't wait for more of that. And now him on Suicide Squad, I'm in. I think a lot of people out there get sort of frustrated with this code that the, so many of the superheroes have. And I understand why it's there, but, you know, like, you can't kill anybody. Oh, you can't use a firearm. Oh, you can't do this. And I'm like, that's why you keep having these same battles. But at the same time, I understand why it's there. And I, I'm not saying, like, I'm definitely not a proponent of violence to end every discussion. I, I'm not saying that at all. But in some point in, in fictional land, in comic books, you, you do go, well, you know what? If you just end him right here, you won't have to face that guy again. I know he's going to get out. I know he's going to escape. And you're going to be writing something later on where you two are facing off again. Now he's done something more terrible. Why not just end it? How many so, times has the Joker escaped from Arkham? I mean, but, like, serious. But still, the, the, and we get it. Like, there have been deaths but it's always like the villains because that's who you're supposed to be rooting against. Taking out a good guy or taking out an innocent person or taking out a corrupt politician. I'm like, cool. Why hasn't anybody turned the tables on them? I mean, just once. Well, Red Hood does that, obviously. If you know anything about him and his character, you know. The other one, Clown Killer. I mean, he's, Clown Hunt, he's, yeah. he's Clown Hunter. He's getting there. But, I mean, they really are seriously like taking it to the next level. Now, am I saying that that's the answer? No. Am I saying it's interesting to read from a fictional viewpoint? Yes. Yes. Next on the list for me, and my last one actually, is Suicide Squad number seven. Okay. Suicide Squad. So the new storyline. I've been trying really hard to get 
very much more into it. I have not seen the movie yet, the newest movie. I hear a lot of good things about it. I did watch the first one. It wasn't the best movie, but it wasn't the worst. I'm fans of individual people within that movie, both actors and actresses and characters. So it was enough reason for me to watch it and want to watch it again, and I have. I watched it more than once. I fast forward through it. This series, to me, is trying very hard, but I'm not on board yet. I still, I know this is issue seven. I read the first four and I'm, I was out. I think I'm hanging on because of my love of characters in my head or in the movie. I love Margot Robbie as Harley. Um, I liked her in Harley and the Emancipation of what? Are you okay, the yeah. Birds of Prey movie. And I also liked her in Suicide Squad. I didn't mind Will Smith as Deadshot. He wasn't my favorite. I like Captain Boomerang because I like to hate him. That's what you're supposed to do. Most of the members of Suicide Squad. I didn't care for Jared Leto as the Joker. She hates him or really does not like him as the Joker. I get that. But Great. regardless... I'm still hanging on because I do have affinity for certain characters, either in the movie versions or in the comic book, like Harley. I just one of my favorites. So I'm, I'm pulling for him. I'm like, come on, get it together. John Cena, I think, is underappreciated. Yeah. <laughs> I like him. So when I heard about him being Pete, I'm like, yes. But maybe the new movie will change my mind about the series because neither one of us has seen it yet. I don't think so. Or maybe this will be the last issue of Suicide Squad I get for a while. I, my challenge with the story was, it, for me with Suicide Squad, what makes it work is, yes, you have some of the most like dastardly and horrific characters in this world mm. that are, they are villains. You are supposed to dislike them, just like he was describing yeah. with Captain Boomerang. But... Off what, with his head. Yeah, but, <laughs> but what makes them interesting is when you throw them all together... And they all are now doing, you know, despicable things to save the world. But then you've got to have that comedy element. Because otherwise it gets yes. really, really dark. And suddenly you're like, well, this isn't So fun. favorite scene from the first Suicide Squad movie? All of them in the bar. Yes. The, the, the you know, regrouping right before, like, they've had their butts handed to them. And you're debating, like, oh, well, no, maybe they're not going to win, right? And right before they go out and kick some ass, that's my favorite scene in the movie. Because of the humor in it. So with the comic book series, they have one character that they've thrown in there that's meant to be the comic relief, except she's not that funny. Mm. And I'm like, you should have used Harley Quinn because half of Harley Quinn's scenes, for me, I love Harley Quinn. So for me, as soon as you throw Harley into this series, it would have changed some of the dynamics. It would have changed some of the humor. It would have added a lot more, especially between her and Peacemaker. I'm like, I want to yeah. see that, you know, do come out. Mm. So. Yeah. I understand why they wanted to give kind of Harley Quinn as a character a break and showcase yeah. other characters. It's just they chose the wrong one, in my opinion. So instead, you just have kind of the dark side of the Suicide Squad, but not like a good Punisher dark side of Suicide Squad. It's just dark with attempts at humor and attempts at characters, and I'm just not there yet. So Like the television version of Constantine. Yes. That didn't work. It just, it's a valiant effort but yeah. i'm not feeling it all right and there are some trades that are coming out this week but honestly yes. i didn't see any that we were you know big you know highly recommending mm. the big stuff is coming out next week so mm. i'm surprised nobody's asked yet in the comments but i'm going to try something and dun dun. nobody's ever asked me what i'm drinking is anyone actually making it to the end of the video if you're curious today we have a beautiful Single pot distilled Irish whiskey, Sexton's, one of my favorites. It stays in a special decanter in our um, library. And if you are interested in finding it for yourself and trying it, if you're a single, this is actually an, a single um, pot, so it's a little bit different. But basically, if you're a fan of Irish whiskey, I highly recommend it. That was an, a random aside. If you want to know more about what we're drinking from time to time, ask. Share with us what you like. We'll York, be happy. Yorkshire tea with milk. Well, yeah, that was bad. And I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good, and I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. There's a slight Harry Potter theme going on. And I have yard work to do, but hey, not today. <laughs>
It's a holiday weekend here. I have it tomorrow to do it. It'll be there tomorrow. It will be there tomorrow. So keep tuning in. Comment down below. Yes. What are you guys grabbing? Um, what are you grabbing? What are you drinking? What are you celebrating at the end of October or in the next few months? And we are going to be talking to you all very soon. And please make sure to subscribe because, like I said, October is going to be amazing. Yes. We'll see you all very soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.